earlier this week, I mentioned how America is in the midst of another lost cause moment where Republicans attempting to play revisionist history in matters of race and oppression to push their version of American narratives. In his book, Robert E. Lee and Me, A Southerner's Reckoning with the Myth of the Lost Cause, Ty Siddeley uncovers the truth about the Confederacy and its primary goal during the Civil War, which was to subjugate and maintain the enslavement of black people. Joining us to discuss the book and America's track record of painting false narratives to manipulate history is retired Brigadier General and professor and author Ty Siddeley. Professor Siddeley, how are you? I'm great, Charles. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely, sir. Uh, so I, I made a comparison to, you know, uh, what is happening now around critical race theory uh, um, and uh, defund the police and all forms of kind of race issues and the 2024 presumed candidates all using the same language around America is not a racist country to say that, that is kind of a lost cause moment in the vein of what was happening after the Civil War, although clearly a, sm a, a smaller version of it. How do you see what's happening now? Is that a fair comparison? Well, uh, Charles, I don't think the lost cause ever really went away. I mean, this myth that 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 the, that the Civil War about the Civil War stayed through the 20th century. And I think only now are, are we really beginning to understand how bad it was. And so the fact that, that many people are going back to those same lies, the big lie, the, the biggest lie in American history, it, it, it doesn't surprise me because it's, it's always been there. And it's such, a, such a, a huge part of our historical past. I mean, they were doing this in textbooks in the early part of the 20th century where, where um, a United Daughters of the Confederacy were burning books, enforcing uh, textbooks to ensure that it said that the Civil War wasn't about slavery, that slaves were happy in their condition, just these monstrous lies. The textbooks I had in Virginia growing up as a kid also did the same thing to show segregation was great. Textbooks are always doing this, and the reason is history is dangerous. It goes after our myths and our identities, and when somebody challenges those myths and our identities, the reaction, as we've seen, is ferocious. You know, it really speaks to the power of narrative and ability to shape narrative and how that, uh, you know, the, the people who originally put the lie into the textbook or erase the lie or burn the book or try to erase the memory of what had truly really happened, they knew it was a lie. Decades, generations out, somehow that narrative becomes a collected, accepted truth. Talk to us about how powerful that is, the, the, the ability to, for people to start out with an absolute lie, which I think we're starting out with some absolute lies right now. And, you know, we can kind of accept that over time and it becomes an accepted truth. Well, it's so true. So this lost cause myth, just to, to, to inform your, I know you know it, but what that lost cause myth says is imagine that after the Civil War, the, the white South went to war to expand slavery into Cuba, Mexico, Latin America. It was a slave republic. And not only did they, 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 they sowed the wind, they reaped the whirlwind. And what they wanted was racial control and enslavement. They, they lose. And, and so they create a new narrative to say this war, the war wasn't fought over slavery. Wrong. Enslaved people were happy, monstrous. Uh, the North won because of more manpower materiel, too easy. Grant, the great general, was a butcher and a drunk. Confederate soldiers were the best. Reconstruction was an evil failure. And Robert E. Lee was the finest man who ever lived. But there's a purpose, there's a pernicious purpose. And that is that this lost cause myth combines with segregation laws, white terror, lynching, black disenfranchisement, and Confederate monuments to create a white supremacist society. And by doing that, that's what it, this, the pernicious nature of this is, is that it reinforces white political power at the expense of black people. And that continues on throughout the 20th century until most people believe it. If you say the lie long enough, most people believe it. That's why saying accurate history, telling accurate stories, whether it's about January 6th or about the Civil War or about the segregation era, are so vitally important to our nation. And I know that's what you're doing, and that's what I'm trying to do, and, and people need to continue to tell accurate stories, but stories change people's minds. Facts don't change people's minds, but storytelling, just as you said, can help do that. Well, is, is that the reason that this whole um, 
critical race theory, which is really not, none of these laws that I've seen are strictly about critical race theory. They're really about not teaching accurate history, history to children in schools. Is that why that is so important for people to push back against? Because once they feed it to the kids as if it is a true thing, after a while it will become, they will come to accept it as true. Absolutely. Listen, our history, that's why history is so important. It's our narrative of America. And our narrative of America is fundamentally, if we use this lost cause, fundamentally flawed. And, it, and I think your, your column did a great job of putting this in perspective of saying we're, we're excluding, not only are we excluding the stories, the awful stories about what America's done, but we also exclude the great stories um, of, of particularly black Americans who have done so much for this country, whether it's in, in my field in, among black soldiers or if it's anybody else. So the stories are that important and that's why it's so critical why they're willing to fight over it. Because if you change the narrative of America and you make it inclusive, then that is going to affect the political power of people that want to keep it in just one area. So it is, that's why history wars have been going on for the, the length and breadth of our country and why now we've got to continue to tell accurate stories about who fought for this country, about why they fought for this country, and about how, and about the, the, both the good and the evil of this country. Listen, we Americans aren't made out of cotton candy. We can handle the truth. We really can. Mm -hmm. But the only way to handle the truth is to give the truth to people. Professor Ty Siddeley, thank you so much for joining me tonight. I really appreciate it, sir. Your Black History Moment is next.